Good morning, welcome to another weekly vlog. We are going on holiday to the south coast this week, so hopefully a seaside kind of vlog. Good evening, it's Saturday night. We made it on holiday. We're down on the south coast of England at a place called Eastbourne. It's really, really lovely. The sky is honestly so beautiful tonight. I'm not sure if I can really catch it on camera. It's a beautiful textured pattern like this. Honestly, like, how do clouds even do that? Anyway, I thought I'd come down to the sea, largely because I wanted to see the beautiful light, but also because I thought it would be a nice place to start off talking about what I'm going to be reading this week. I've been in a bit of a reading slump. I didn't really read anything last week, and so I'm happy to be on holiday because holidays feel like definite reading zone. I think I'm going to treat myself by reading Titus Alone, which is the third part of the Gormenghast trilogy. I read a little while ago the second part of the trilogy, and it was honestly my favourite book that I've read all year. It's following this main character, Titus, who is, like, the head of... A noble family who live in this ancient castle that's completely shrouded in tradition and his life has been kind of controlled by the tradition of this castle and it's following him at that kind of coming of age point in his life I think where he's like trying to break away from the boundaries and constraints which have been upon him during his childhood and his growing up. What I found with the first two books is that they took a little bit of getting into and then they just became absolutely insanely good for the second half of the book and I've read just the very first chapter or two of this one and it feels like it's going to be the same way with this. The other book that I'm reading is called Books Promiscuously Read, Reading as a Way of Life. It's kind of an academic text talking about different reasons why we should be readers, which I'm really down for. It's been looking at literacy as a transgression, as in terms of like seeking knowledge that doesn't belong to you and that being why reading is something which has historically and still to the modern day is controlled by those in power and is withheld from those who are powerless unless they manage to seek it out and by transgression learn how to do it and therefore gain access to this other world of knowledge which you know they're not supposed to have and it does close analyses of different texts to prove its point so it looked at Don Quixote it's looked quite closely at Frankenstein it's looked quite closely at Middlemarch it kind of annoys me because it's definitely one of those books that really spoils the plot of the books that it talks about when it does the close analysis so it's really interesting and for the books that I've read I'm really enjoying it but for the books that I haven't read I'm finding it really annoying I'm not a fan of books that spoil other books and I have read quite a lot of the core classics now so I feel like books like this are a bit more okay to read fingers crossed that the beauty of Mervyn Peake's writing in Titus alone will help pull me out of my reading slump and I'll keep you updated as the week goes on Tom and I are on holiday with his family until Thursday and then it's Tom's 30th birthday over the weekend so we're actually going away over this upcoming weekend with a group of friends. I'm really looking forward to it but first Eastbourne.
Hey there, it's Thursday. Um, apologies for the weird angle. I'm sitting in a dinghy, um, not on the sea, on dry lands, keeping it from blowing away while everybody else is playing a game. And I thought it would be a nice opportunity to do an update on what I've been reading this week. So, been on holiday, obviously. It's been really, really lovely, just very relaxed, lots of time, just kind of hanging out, really. Going on walks, having nice meals, that kind of thing. Today is our last day here. We're catching a train in a couple of hours to go to London to then go to the Peak District for Tom's 30th birthday weekend, which is going to be absolutely amazing. Um, we've hired a castle <laughs> with like a really big group of friends. It was really bizarrely and wonderfully cheap to the extent that we're still a little bit worried that it'll turn out to be a scam and we'll turn up and find that there is no castle. It's on Airbnb and I think it's like new to Airbnb and so they had kind of massive discount on the price for its first few times to get the good reviews in. It's what we're hoping is the case as opposed to it just being like a total and utter scam but I guess we'll find out. So at the beginning of the week I said that I was focusing on reading books promiscuously read and Titus Alone which is the third novel in the Gorman Gas trilogy. I actually haven't finished either of them yet but I am making progress. I ended up spending most of the week reading this book called How to Pray by Pete Grieg. If you've been watching this channel for a while you'll notice that I kind of dip in and out of occasional Christian books and I feel like they are a part of my reading material and so I sort of like mention them on this channel but I don't really want to go into loads of discussion about them because um, I still feel like religion is quite a private part of my life and something that I'm very much in the process of exploring and I'm kind of like not religious enough to talk about the books from a strong Christian perspective but also not atheist enough at all to rip them apart so yeah basically I feel like this book did exactly what it said on the tin in terms of being a good guide for beginners about praying. I, I did like quite a lot of it but there were a few bits of it that really jarred with me, really grated on me which I just like felt very uncomfortable about and so probably a rule about a 3.5 star read but um, I do quite like that on holiday when you just suddenly decide to read something and pick it up and go for it even though it's a bit off-piste from what you normally read and I, I did enjoy that process with this very much and it's given me some stuff to mull over and reflect on. Then the other books, this book's promiscuously read book, it's so academic that I've just really really not been in the mood for it at all. However, I have been working my way through Titus Alone. This book is different to the first two in a couple of really key ways which I am just not enjoying as much. Firstly, it's set outside of the castle and I'm missing the castle, which is perhaps how Peak is expecting and wanting his readers to feel because it also is a book that is exploring how a sense of place forms our identity and how even when we leave behind a place we can't escape from the way that that place has formed us and shaped who we are. Also the other thing that it's doing that I'm really missing is that it feels like it does have a protagonist um, whereas the other books very much were like switching between lots and lots of different characters and I enjoyed that a lot more. I'm not so bothered about the character who we're following really closely here. I don't feel like he's quite as richly fleshed out as some of the other characters were in the books that we've left behind. I really really hope that this has been audible and hasn't been too windy. I tried putting the camera inside this little boat thing. I'll show you. I have the camera here hopefully sheltered from the wind. Um, I also hope you can hear the sea in the background because literally the loveliest sound, isn't it? The repetitive waves. Hopefully I'll be able to finish Titus Alone this week, at least. Maybe this book's promiscuously read book. I might end up finishing that off at a later point when life has calmed down a bit. We're very much traveling all over the place at the moment. It's a bit exhausting. Um, and I'm also a bit just like constantly having my migraines bubbling away in the background. I feel quite anxious about not getting migraines and trying to manage them. It's being a bit kind of mentally tiring, just trying to plan things and make sure I get food at the right time and enough sleep and yeah, hoping to manage that okay. I will catch up with you later on in the week and hopefully you will see that we arrive at a castle and it's actually a real castle rather than a scam. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Speak to you soon.
Happy birthday, Tom.